All right, so oddly enough, I feel a little bit obligated to almost apologize because I haven't even published a new episode in a few weeks, but I have a few new responsibilities here and there, including being a site expert over on a uh, some entertainment website that has to do with music. I don't need to get into that too much, other than to say that it is... Um, it's, it's a bit of a responsibility and I'm, you know, just getting started over there and trying to make that a little bit of a focus, at least for the uh, first month. And then, you know, after a while, I'll probably get the hang of things and yada, yada, yada. And maybe I'll be able to crank out more episodes at the sort of traditional rate of this podcast. <clears throat> that out of the way, I do want to talk about a Quora question that was asked a while back, and they ask, why are liberals lying about Clarence Thomas? He's broken no law. The left claims he broke a long-standing tradition by accepting trips, but those were all personal, and the invites came from someone who's been a best friend for decades. Hyuk hyuk? Well, I added that last part, that goofy like hyuk hyuk, but nevertheless, you, you get the idea. So I answered that question, and I, I'll read part of that answer. I said, I can provide some information about the controversy surrounding Justice Clarence Thomas. A Supreme Court justice is supposed to place a loyalty to the Constitution, the laws, and ethical principles above private gain. And... As a part of ethics-related laws for all federal employees, they were supposed to submit public financial disclosures, which includes gifts over a few hundred dollars, and if they don't, they can face criminal charges or stiff civil penalties. So the controversy surrounding Justice Thomas's conduct stems from his acceptance of gifts and travel accommodations from people and organizations with an interest in matters before the Supreme Court. The GOP keeps calling themselves the party of law and order, yet where is their idea that no one is above the law? While it is not illegal for Supreme Court justices to accept such gifts, they are legally supposed to be reported, and it is generally viewed as inappropriate due to the potential for conflicts of interest of the appearance of impropriety. So basically, in this episode, I'm looking at corrupt Clarence Thomas and his wife and other GOP scandals and scams. And of course, if you want to look at real or imagined scandals involving Democrats, you can always watch Fox News or something like that. But anyway, we're going to look at this issue other federal judges and justices and politicians have or could have faced complaints about improper spending and ethical violations in the past, and some have even done prison time for breaking laws. You know, if you want to look at a corrupt Democrat, you could look at Rod Blagojevich, who looked like the mascot for the big boy fast food chain. <laughs> Go ahead and look up a picture of the two and compare them side by side, you'll see that he looks eerily similar to the big boy icon or mascot, whatever you want to call him. It's it's freaky. I could really do a whole episode on that. But, you know, don't let anyone tell you that these kinds of stories are brand spanking new or that they've only ever applied to any uh, Republicans or whatever. You know, there are partisan hacks out there who who will claim that, oh, it's all just, it's all just done for, uh, you know, partisan reasons. So, yes, fine, the GOP should call the Democrats the party of government waste, corruption, and all of that. They can do that, just like Dems can say the same stuff about the neo-fascist theocratic GOP. Well, it's also laughable that the 1908 Democratic Party platform called for equal rights to all, special privileges to none. So how'd that turn out? 
Of course, back then, the Democratic Party was more of a racist party brimming with Dixiecrats anyway. And uh, you know that if you look up a history book, well, an honest history book, I'm not sure if you could succeed doing that in Ron DeSantis, Florida anymore, because they're doing some funny things with history books over there. They're trying to tweak it to make it more palatable for a right-wing ideology. But just remember, when these partisan hacks accuse others of stuff, 99.9% of the time, they also have other skeletons in their own closets. And uh, if you want a skeleton in the closet, you probably don't have to look too far or too deep. For example, Republican Tom DeLay was embroiled in tons of scandals during his career. He was infamous for allegedly having lobbyists pay for travel and expenses that appeared to violate the laws and ethics rules, and he was accused of money laundering, you name it. DeLay was also in the pesticide business, which had fed into his desire to not have governments regulate businesses, almost like corruption masquerading as some sort of lofty principles. You know, I also have a theory about uh, a local politician named Mike Lotti, who's no longer in office here in Michigan. But my theory was that he ran for office mostly to get special uh, treatment because, um, you know, he was in the real estate business. He still is. But, um, you know, that's uh, that's something I couldn't really prove. But that, that was my sneaking suspicion at the time. And that's often true about politicians who have business ties. That's why I've never been one of those people who's like, oh, a, a politician should have business experience because, well, what that means is that they're going to be corrupt more than likely. They're going to seek policies that are favorable to their own business interests and potentially put money into their own pockets. Which really, I mean, let, let's be honest, if you're a politician, you're already probably making halfway decent money. I mean, you're probably not going to be in the poorhouse, but these people seek these offices because they are greedy and they want to take advantage in a lot of cases anyway. I know some people would say, oh, it's every case, but you know what? I'm even going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I'll just say it's in many cases. So uh, back to Tom DeLay. Maybe he used his time in the pest control industry to study the habits of pests and adopt some of the better ones for himself. That's plausible if you ask me. I mean, the way they scurry around, <laughs> you know, uh, the halls of government, these sacred institutions and, uh, you know, try to find favorable little corners for themselves that they can do their little uh, pest-like things, make alliances with these other pests in their midst. It's all sort of entertaining, but also obviously tragic. Tom DeLay also had, well, he was also around in the heyday of Dennis Hastert, a Republican Speaker of the House, and in fact, the longest serving speak Republican Speaker of the House, who wound up being convicted for crimes related to, you guessed it, child molestation. So he was a groomer, in other words. Well, how come we don't hear about him? Even the Democrats don't bring him up. Well, that's quaint, sort of a strange thing to omit from that particular discussion. And, you know, I've brought him up before on this podcast, but I kind of feel obligated to mention him again because nobody else seems to remember that. I feel it's necessary to bring up that point because which party is always accusing the other of being full of nothing but child molesters? Gee, I wonder. Also, keep in mind that whenever these Republicans attack stuff like public housing, they're literally living off of taxpayer dollars while they pile up more skeletons in their own closets and pretend the other side are the only ones who are, you know, corrupt or whatever. 
and uh, the corruption and skeletons just keep piling up. Keep in mind also that Ginny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, runs a little-known consulting company, which might result in conflicts of interest of its own. But one of the obvious scandals is that she prodded former President Donald Trump's then chief of, chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in late 2020 to try to overturn the presidential election results. As CNBC notes, Ginny Thomas's Liberty Consulting's few known clients range from the Center for Security Policy, a nonprofit founded by a conservative activist accused of anti-Muslim rhetoric, to a political action a committee titled Fed Op PAC. What a cute little title that is. Well, that's my little added commentary. But anyway, the Fed Up PAC, which backed failed Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore, who, like Hastert, was accused of sexual misconduct, though in his case he apparently preferred girls over boys. You know, not like that really matters, but j just saying. And uh, well, anyway, Roy Moore was that way, and uh, the Fed Up PAC also was uh, not fed up with that, I guess. But also the uh, Center for Security Policy were among a group of advocates who filed an amicus brief with the Supreme Court backing Trump's travel ban the center paid Liberty Consulting more than $200,000 over the course of two years, from 2017 and through 2018, according to tax, tax disclosure reports from those years. So again, that's according to CNBC. And if, if you look up that article, you can find it. It's called Inside the Consulting Firm run by Jeannie Thomas, wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. And uh, in other words, it doesn't seem like Clarence possibly shouldn't be tackling cases that involve immigration and presumably shit ton of other things. In fact, maybe there should even be laws barring the spouses and children of Supreme Court justices from engaging in lobbying efforts that might be a conflict of interest. I know it gets tough because technically, if judges really had to recuse themselves from any case where they might have bias, they might never be able to hear a case. So there's always the question of where do you draw the line? But really it seems like it might be better to err on the side of caution rather than say, oh no, those poor Supreme Court justices and other politicians no longer can be corruptly influenced by lobbyists and hate groups. How sad. Those, those poor little babies, you know. Ugh. Instead of coddling them, you know, I think, uh, I think we need more codes of ethics that keep them in check. Because that's not sad if they're prevented from being corrupt. In fact, maybe these people should be prevented from <laughs> having families. You know, I mean, you know, you know, if you want that kind of special power to be like a Supreme Court justice, well, okay, you're going to have to become a celibate recluse. And it seems like a fair cost to pay if you want to make decisions that can make or break people's lives across the generations. Well, okay, that's that's a bit of an extreme one, but, um, you know, the point is, they want they want to make decisions that severely hamper and restrict other people's lives. Well, maybe, maybe there should be little rules in effect that actually hamper and restrict them to an extreme degree. It would be hard to find an institution that matters more in terms of public trust than something like the Supreme Court. And it may be for the betterment of our country if you effectively, but non-literally, neuter all of these corruptocrats before they can screw us all over. Or failing some of these efforts, I can at least go with a compromise 
that I remember stated by Jello Biafra, that these people should be forced to wear corporate logos on their suits, similar to NASCAR drivers. You know, maybe list the top 10 donors to their uh, campaigns or at least um, something like that. Maybe maybe at least the top five, you know, have, have their logos or names on their suits so that way they are appropriately made fun of. So obviously I was being a little bit facetious when I was talking about not letting them have families <laughs> and all that, but at the same time, is that really that much more extreme than uh, some of some of the things that have been laws over the years? I wonder, you know. Um, I at least think that there should be restrictions on political dynasties. I think that, you know, if you're going to be a president, then you shouldn't be allowed to have your spouse become a president or your children and that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? At least, at least have rules against a direct line of descendants who could be in an ascendance. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, that's about all I have to say about this. Um, I'm sure some of you might disagree for some reason, but I tried to word things in a way that was, you know, thought-provoking, humorous, and also fact-based. And uh, yeah, well, that's about it for now. And have a fantabulous day.